No. Okay. So each one of you just kind of talk a little bit about the postseason and, you know, everything's in the books, the hay's in the barn. Now it becomes down to a different time of year, a different um, sense of urgency. If you just talk a little about what playing in the postseason means to each one of you, and then we'll open it up for questions. Go ahead, Justin. Um, I would say just getting the opportunity to really, or for me to be able to play in my hometown and then um, being able to compete. And, you know, really all, everything that's happened in the past is kind of off the table. And so it's kind of, kind of like a new season. It gives everybody a new shot, a new opportunity to really do what, um, whatever they want to do when it comes to the postseason. So, I mean, we're looking forward to, um, you know, starting it off with the bang and um, doing what we know we can do. Um, just excited to play in the postseason like this. Uh, you know, we worked our whole, you know, the whole time for this moment, play out here, you know, just win, you know, single game elimination. So, but it's just a, um, it's a blessing to be here. And, you know, not everybody gets to go to the NCAA tournament. So I feel like, you know, we all got to see the opportunity and uh, enjoy it. Devontae? Um, you always play, I mean, it just means more to you when it's in the postseason because, you know, you could you be going home at any moment. So, I mean, you just want to leave it all out there. What was it like for you to play at home last year? In New York? Yeah. I mean, we were one, we were doing great, but um, I mean, it was still fun to see family, have family, because I don't have much family come to games often. So, for them to see me in the Big Ten tournament last year was, uh, it was nice. Yeah. Uh, playing in the postseason, I think it just means more. You get a clean slate, so I feel like you get to, you know, get a shot at um, reaching all your goals, and I feel like it just it means a lot to us, and we just need to work hard and try and win, actually. Open it up for questions. Go ahead. As you guys have revisited the film from the first game against Ohio State, what are what have been some points of emphasis as far as um, things you're trying to do differently as you prepare to face them a second time this week? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I feel like Coach has been emphasizing uh, making uh, the bigs play play uh, people that like they did in the first uh, game. You know, put in a couple of different things. So. I feel like uh, just a point of emphasis of just making everybody guard everybody on the court um, and uh, make it, um, put a little bit more movement into our offense. Jaron, do you guys keep up with any of the bracketology? I mean, do you look at what it would take, what people are saying it would take to, to I mean, actually qualify for the NCAA? Yeah, we see, we hear the talk, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's all over social media, so, but we don't really pay attention to it. We just focus on what we got to focus on and the next game and each war. What have the coaches told you about this week? About or have they told you not to even think about the NCAA? Or are they just telling you? Nah, we just focus, each coach just focus on uh, the game plan and what we got to do to uh, beat Ohio State. That's all, really. Justin, you said you played in the United Center before. What do you remember about that? <coughs> and just also speak to you know the last couple of weeks your improved play. What what were two or three keys that kind of in your mind made that happen? Um, well, playing at the United Center is a lot of energy. Um, there's a lot of um, Indiana fans in the Chicago area, so I, I would expect that there will, we'll have a, a good crowd um, whenever we play. But um, for me, the last couple of weeks has been really about just getting back to playing my game and doing what got me here. Um, I think I kind of lost sight of um, <clears throat> what I was able to do well last year and leading up to last year and now I've really started to go back to doing what I know how to do and what I'm, do, what I'm good at. Just Devontae, sort of a similar question for you. Three straight games and double figure scoring, 10 assists to two turnovers the last three games, shooting well behind the arc. Just what do you think is kind of working for you here as, as you do get ready for March or well, I know it is March but you kind of know what I mean the postseason? Um, I think just, just being consistent and um, staying focused and locked in and knocking down shots is big, of course. And I guess for both you and Al, uh, between you, Al, Rob, just the whole team, it's something like 15, 13 turnovers or 15 turnovers last week total. Uh, I think the turnover numbers have been depressed the last few games in general. Just where has kind of the enhanced ball security come from, especially when you've been playing opponents, including like Illinois, where there's obviously a lot of pressure defense and, and difficulty going on to the ball? 
Uh, I would say just emphasis on taking care of the ball and just knowing that we got a good backcourt and we just uh, taking care of the ball, really not, not allowing the pressure to speed us up and just taking our time. Jerome, what do you see in Devontae these last uh, three, four games? What was allowed him to maybe flip that switch and maybe hit a level, that, you know, consistent level that uh, he's been working toward? Uh, personally, I feel like he's just playing more confident, um, just playing more poised, not letting um, the game come fast to him, just slowing the game down his head. I feel like he's uh, eliminated distraction for us. As, you know, um, you know, he's moving on to the next play. If he gets one turnover, he's not going to make sure, you know, he's going to not do that the same mistake over and over. So I feel like he's just playing more poised, more calm, and more confident. What, what is your confidence level now as opposed to maybe two weeks ago? It seems like you're a guy that doesn't really lack confidence. I guess what, what's maybe the, the, the confidence level you need to describe right now? Um, I think it's higher than it's been in the past. And I'm glad you think that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always confident, so that's, that's good news. I guess Justin Duran for both of you. Uh, in his post game speech the other day, Duran kind of mentioned how you know, he's a guy who a lot of the team turns to when they need you know, advice both on and off the court. Being at that same kind of position and being you know, a bit younger than him, how has he kind of helped you guys along uh, both on and off the court during your time here in Indiana? Um, he's definitely, or especially when I came in, he's definitely uh, taking me under his wing, um, kind of showing me the ropes, how to do things. Um, he's always talking to us. Um, you know, if something goes wrong, something goes, something goes wrong, something goes good. Um, he's always in our ear, you know, telling us keep going or keep your head up, stuff like that. Um, but he's definitely been a, a good presence to have. Yeah, he's Uncle Jamo. <laughs> On the court, I kind of like constantly tell y'all how he does, and how he, even if he's out, he's still talking to us. But like off the court, he's just you got a flat tire in Chicago. He'll drive to Chicago and get you. So. Is he one of your emergency contacts? Yeah, definitely. Not, he's not, he's not a list as a mercy, but he is the guy, like, he is the go-to guy for anything that happens on campus, off campus. <laughs> Call Jay Mo. <laughs> yeah. You guys have kind of played with your backs against the wall for three or four weeks and now, where you know, you know you can't lose. Uh, now you're going to face some teams that haven't maybe in that situation. Is that a little bit of an edge, maybe, um, that you might have in a, in a kind of a neutral tournament type setting this week? Yeah, um, I feel like, you know, we've just been, um, like you said, we've been playing with our backs against the wall. Um, I feel like we're not really focused on if any other teams have wins or losses or what their schedule is, or how, um, what, yeah, what, what they need to do to get into the tournament. I feel like this whole week and the last, you know, two weeks, we've just been focused on us and how hard we go in practice and how hard we play. It's a simple question, but just how much of a difference has being healthy made for you guys? I mean, this is probably the healthiest you've been maybe since November. Uh, not having to worry about fatigue or anything like that that maybe you were dealing with in January and, and parts of February. Uh, I think, I think it's, um, it's a blessing that everybody's healthy right now because we've had uh, bad luck with injuries all season. And you'll see, as you see, that we have a lot of different pieces that are important to this team and to winning games. Um, just to follow up on that, how big of a difference is it in practice? Uh, because I know that's something Coach just talked about. Just there was a stretch there where there were guys that were injured, maybe guys that were playing, but were you know still hurt enough that they needed to be limited in practice. And there's just a lot you couldn't do. How much of a difference, or how different are practices now that maybe you do have some of that health back? Um, I'd say they're a lot more competitive. Um, we're able to compete more. We're able to go at each other, which I think is why it's translating so well to the games. Um, I mean, we're really, I mean, we're, we're getting after each other and you know, we're putting ourselves in game-like situations, and we see that it's translating. So I mean, it's become, it's been a big help. I think it's kind of funny, you guys, the idea of you know having to, to win a couple games to be able to make it to the tournament or something like that. The fact that you need to win is that a pressure that you guys enjoy that you think the team will handle well, especially kind of given how it's you know made up of some younger guys. Yeah, I feel like it just feel, it fuels us, um, gives us something to uh, work for, like a goal. But um, I mean, like any team, we all want to make the tournament, especially for our seniors that haven't been there since freshman or sophomore year. So um, yeah, like I said, we just you know we working every day to get to that point, and you know we just want to take one game at a time and take it uh, each war at a time. These last three, four games, is this the team you guys are? 
is this the team you guys thought you'd be, could be, would be, you know, earlier on in the season? Well, yeah, I feel like that. I feel like, uh, you know, we started off hot and came into a little slump, and coach just kept pressing. Like, you know, you never know how teams can, um, how, how things can switch for teams. He's always been saying, like, you know, teams start out hot and cool off and never pick it back up. Teams stay hot or teams waver. And he said, we've been going up and down and we are playing our best ball right now. So we just got to keep with it and keep competing in practice. Monty, we've asked you kind of what, what has been different for you these last few games. Is there anything you're not doing that that's, uh, maybe helps you out a little bit more these last uh, couple weeks? Bad habits you've tried to eliminate, or anything you've just tried to do differently? Um, yeah. <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> do we have anything? <coughs> Sorry, I'm dying. Uh, do we have anybody? Anything else for the guys? Lord. All right, thanks.